If you were to walk away knowing only one thing about calendula's many herbal gifts, it would be that there are countless benefits of calendula flowers for the skin. It heals wounds, relieves inflammation, increases beneficial immune responses, is mildly antimicrobial, and even protects the skin from radiation damage. In this video, I'm going to share in-depth information about calendula and show you how to make calendula oil. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video to get my recipe for calendula oil. I'm going to show you how to make this extra potent so that you can avoid the many mistakes beginners make when making herbal oils. I also have a free herbal oils tutorial ebook for you. More about that later. And while you're watching, let me know in the comments below your favorite ways to work with calendula. It's always interesting and insightful to hear the experiences of plant lovers out there. And your suggestions may also inspire others. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Calendula is a common garden flower in the aster family that now grows in temperate climates all over the world. It generously blooms from bright orange and yellow blossoms throughout the summer and often reseeds itself, returning again year after year. Besides offering beauty wherever it grows, calendula has been used for thousands of years for many medicinal applications. Calendula is simply amazing for the skin. You can think of calendula as an all-purpose plant for so many skin problems. Here's a look at many ways we can employ this brilliantly blooming plant for the skin. Do you have dry, itchy skin? Use some calendula cream or body butter. Have a mysterious rash? While figuring out the root cause of the rash, reach for calendula to soothe the discomfort. For minor scratches or wounds, try a calendula salve or poultice. It promotes healing by stimulating proliferation and migration of fibroblasts. It's also mildly antimicrobial, helping to prevent infection. Calendula is one of my favorite herbs for dealing with diaper rash. I recommend it as a salve or cream, and it can be used as a preventive as well. When tested on the bottoms of 33 children under the age of three, calendula was found to be both safe and affected for diaper dermatitis. Calendula can soothe many bug bites, including the itchy bites of mosquitoes and the painful sting of bees. Herbalists have long used calendula for skin health, including it in luscious creams or even herbal steams. Science has further confirmed this use by showing that calendula improves elasticity and skin hydration. I recommend frequently using calendula creams on your skin to keep it healthy, soft, and pliable. Calendula can also be used to promote the skin health after skin has been damaged. Calendula creams, oils, and body butters can be used to soothe the skin after a sunburn. It helps to relieve inflammation and pain while promoting new tissue growth. Calendula can protect the skin after it's been exposed to the side effects of radiation therapy. One study showed that calendula worked better than the regularly prescribed pharmaceutical. In this study, 254 patients were given either trolamine or calendula cream to apply after receiving radiation treatment. 
the researchers found that the occurrence of acute dermatitis of grade two or higher was significantly lower with the use of calendula than with trolamine. Moreover, patients receiving calendula had less frequent interruption of radiotherapy and significantly reduced radiation-induced pain. In addition to supporting skin that has been burnt by the sun or radiation, calendula also helps to heal tissues that have been burned by fire or by heat in the kitchen. Fresh poultices and hydrosol washes are two of my favorite ways to use calendulas for this purpose. Calendula can also be used to decrease scar tissue, whether it's from wounds or from surgical scars. I like to apply it regularly as an infused oil combined with St. John's wort oil and rosehip seed oil. In 1919, eclectic herbalist Finley Ellingwood wrote in his book, America Materia Medica, Calendula is especially applicable to severe burns to promote healing and to prevent the formation of a contracting scar. Calendula can be used both externally and internally to support blood vessel health and decrease variscosities, including hemorrhoids and varicose veins. I like to recommend it internally combined with a tincture or tea of yarrow and horse chestnut when using it for this purpose. Calendula is a vulnerary herb, which means it promotes the healing of wounds. In one study, patients with venous leg ulcers were divided into two groups. One group was treated with a calendula ointment twice daily for three weeks. The other group of people were treated with a saline solution dressings. Those being treated with the calendula ointment had a statistically significant acceleration of wound healing over those being treated with the saline solution. Calendula's wound healing, antimicrobial, and inflammatory modulating effects will also work well for internal ulcers. It works best as a long infused tea for these gastrointestinal wounds. Leaky gut, sometimes referred to as intestinal permeability, is essentially a wound of the intestines. Your intestines are covered in these small finger-like projections called villi. They look kind of like this. <laughs> Herbalist Jim McDonald says that they kind of look like shag carpet, and I think that's pretty accurate. So these villi can become damaged by pharmaceuticals, both prescribed and over the counter, as well as excessive alcohol, food allergies, or intolerances. And this is a major issue for people who have celiac disease. Processed foods can be a problem, as well as imbalanced gut flora, and even infections. Leaky gut can lead to many digestive problems and is thought to be a root cause of many autoimmune disorders. While addressing and removing the root cause of this problem is key, herbs can be concurrently used to repair and heal the gut lining. Calendula and plantain are favorites for this effect and are most often recommended as a tea for healing the gut. Regular applications of a calendula-based ointment can help to decrease dandruff. This may be due to its antimicrobial effects because dandruff can be caused by a fungus or to its vulnerary and inflammatory modulating effects. Calendula is one of my favorite herbs for mothers in postpartum care. The flowers can be made into a strong tea for a sitz bath to heal the perineum. I often combine this with plantain and uva ursi. The fresh flower poultice or salve can be used on tender nipples that are new to nursing. I've even seen the tincture applied topically for successfully eliminating severe mastitis. Babies can also benefit from calendula as a diaper rash cream or a gentle wash for their skin. It can also be used for cradle cap, a type of seborrheic dermatitis that affects the heads of infants. So how does calendula address so many different issues in the skin? Well, calendula is filled with flavonoids and antioxidants, including carotenoids, quercetin, and lutein. But calendula is more than the sum of its isolated constituents. For example, one study shows that when compared to the isolated constituent of quercetin, 
calendula as a whole plant works better to decrease human gingival fibroblast mediated collagen degradation. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Another way of assessing how calendula might work is its herbal actions. Calendula has many important herbal actions. We've talked about them. It's vulnerary, heals wounds, it modulates inflammation, it's antimicrobial, and it also can stimulate the immune system. This is one dynamic and helpful plant. As I said earlier, if you were only to learn one thing about calendula, it's that it shines as an herb for the skin, but it has several other important gifts as well. Although the ability to heal the skin is often the most popular way to use calendula, it also offers mild liver support. A strong calendula infusion has a decidedly bitter taste, which gives us a clue to its affinity for supporting the liver and for clearing liver stagnation. Herbalists also use calendula to promote delayed menses as well as painful menstrual cramping, both of which can be a part of a liver stagnation pattern. Though it isn't especially strong, calendula tea, when taken as a warm infusion, has a diaphoretic effect that can be used to support the fever process. Calendula has been used in several in vitro studies for its effect on cancer cells and has been shown to be effective against the cancer cells of colon cancer, leukemia, and melanoma. The results are promising, but human clinical trials are needed to confirm its beneficial effects. We do know that calendula stimulates the immune system. It contains polysaccharides, similar to marshmallow, which is also known for this effect. Calendula is used to stimulate lymphatic drainage and is used for all sorts of stagnant lymph conditions, such as swollen glands, breast cysts, pelvic cysts, and intestinal bloating. From his medical herbalism notes, herbalist Paul Bergner shares with us that calendula acts to mobilize white blood cells, stimulate lymphatic drainage, decrease inflammation of the lymph nodes, and generally support lymphatic circulation. Calendula also has antimicrobial effects, and herbalists use it for fungal infections and preventing bacterial infections as it heals wounds. Calendula is commonly used for fungal infections, mastitis, thrush, gum disease, urinary tract infections, and conjunctivitis, or pink eye. Some herbalists report that when using it as an antimicrobial, it works best as a tincture, although you would want to use it as a tea if you are making an eye wash. In addition to being used as medicine, calendula has also been used as a flavoring and food for hundreds of years. It was popularly added to rice to impart a saffron-like color and was also historically used in soups and broths. It is a beautiful addition to a summer salad topped with flowers. When using it as a food, it's the petals that are most commonly used rather than the entire head. Calendula is an herbaceous perennial, summer annual or winter annual, depending on the climate. It grows up to two feet tall. Calendula may have originally been from Southern Europe, but now it grows all over the world. Calendula is sometimes called pot marigold, but it's not the same plant as the common garden marigold. Calendula flower heads are orange or yellow or a combination of the two. I've also seen ornamental or hybrid calendula flowers with even more color variations. As is typical in the aster family, there are both ray and disc flowers. The ray flowers, or the petals, have two little notches at the end. The flowers have significant bracts, which are fragrant and resinous. The flowers bloom generously through the growing season and thrive in full sun. Calendula is a generous plant. The more flowers you pick, the more flowers appear. The oblong lanceolate leaves are hairy on both sides and grow about two to seven inches. The leaves are also fragrant and resinous.
Calendula seeds are curved. They often look like a C, and they kind of look like a small knobby worm. Calendula readily sows itself with its seeds. If you can grow your own calendula, do it. It's easy to grow and even does well in containers. Having calendula around is a delight. The bright sunny blooms are beautiful, they're easy to harvest, and your freshly harvested calendula will be much stronger than anything you buy dried. If stored well, calendula is best used within six months. Once calendula starts blooming, harvest the entire flower head daily, including the bracts and the petals. This will inspire new flower heads to emerge. I like to harvest the flower buds just as they're opening. I learned from Cascade Anderson Geller that this is when the flower is the most potent. Fully open flower heads can also be used as well. I personally prefer the orange flowers over the yellow, because this makes the most orangest of preparations. But honestly, both yellow and orange are similar in action. You wanna harvest the flowers in the morning after any dew has burned off and the flowers are completely dry. You'll quickly notice that a slightly aromatic sticky resin covers your picking hand, and that's great. You've got good medicine when you have that resinous substance on your fingers. Calendula flowers can be a bit tricky to dry, I place them on a drying rack and I spread them out so that the individual flowers aren't touching. A dehydrator might be necessary in hot, humid climates. Once they're completely dry, I store them in a paper bag because I've lost a couple of batches of calendula flowers that I stored in glass jars. They're just difficult to get completely dry. This method probably works best for arid climates. Calendula can be prepared in a variety of ways. The tincture is said to be the strongest preparation of calendula's antimicrobial properties. It can be diluted to use on wounds or any type of cleansing wash for fungal infections, for example. I like to wilt the flower heads overnight before infusing it with the alcohol. It also infuses very nicely into oil, which can then be used in salves, creams, soaps, body butters, facial serums, lip balms, and many other preparations. I recommend drying the flower heads before infusing it into the oil, but more on making that in just a bit. Calendula makes a wonderful hydrosol that can be spritzed on sunburns, varicose veins, acne, eczema, or simply to maintain healthy skin. It's also made into a succus, which is pressing of the fresh plant juice that's then preserved with alcohol. Many texts recommend using it as a strong infusion or tea. To make this, infused one ounce of calendula flowers into a quart of just boiled water. You let that steep for four to eight hours. You can strain it and then drink it within a day. This is gonna be a fairly bitter blend and so you'll most likely need to sip it slowly throughout the day. Again, it's not entirely pleasant to drink, but this is the best preparation for healing intestinal wounds, supporting the liver, the immune system, and lymphatic circulation. Some people are allergic to members of the Aster family, and they may also have a reaction to calendula. So if you know that you're allergic to plants like chamomile, treat calendula with caution. Calendula infused oil is a wonderful way to enjoy the many gifts of this beautiful plant. When made well, calendula oil can be an absolutely luxurious oil to support your skin, whether you're wanting to improve elasticity or to address rashes, clean up scrapes, minor burns, bug bites, etc. Unfortunately, I see a lot of poorly made calendula oil available out there, and there are three major things that people do wrong. The first is that they only use the petals. Ah, don't do that. Much of the medicine is in the green bits, right? These bracts at the bottom. So you wanna use the whole flower head to get the best results. 
The second is that they use way too little flowers. I often see images of infused calendula oil on social media that are so beautiful, but they just have like a few flowers resting in lots of oil. It's beautiful, but it's weak medicine. Lastly, you wanna be sure that you're using freshly harvested calendula flowers that have been dried. Calendula loses a lot of its medicinal qualities just six months after harvesting. So if your calendula flowers are old and withered, then your infused oil will be weak. So here's how to make strong calendula oil. The ingredients are two cups of freshly dried whole calendula flowers, including petals and the green bits too, the whole flower head. I like to put mine in a blender or a food processor to break them down into really small pieces. You also need two cups of carrier oil of your choice. Here's how to make your oil. Place the calendula flowers in a pint jar. Then pour the oil over the calendula. Using a clean instrument, stir it well, and then end with kind of pushing the herbs under the oil. Then you wanna tightly cover the jar and always label it. Then keep the jar on the counter. I like to do it with a cloth over it, but you want it where you can easily keep an eye on it. And then every day for the first week, open up the jar and stir it well. You'll wanna infuse this oil for about four to six weeks or until the oil has really taken on the color of the calendula flowers. Then you'll strain the oil through a cheesecloth. You wanna squeeze that cheesecloth really well to get all of the oil from the flowers. And then when it's done, store in a cool, dark place. There is an art to making powerful herbal infused oils. There's so many variations between dried and fresh herbs and even which oil to use. Herbal infused oils is one of the many herbal preparations that we teach in our herbal medicine course, Rooted Medicine Circle. If you'd like a free sample tutorial from Rooted Medicine Circle on how to make herbal infused oils, as well as a recipe card for making calendula infused oil, then visit the link in the video description. This tutorial shows you the best herbs to make into herbal oils, as well as some tips for choosing the best carrier oils. Also in the video description, I've included other helpful links like where you can buy calendula as well as both of my books. If you've enjoyed this video on calendula health benefits and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you stick around. The best way to get started is to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you can be the first to get my best herbal insights and recipes. Calendula fun fact. Calendula grows easily in containers or in your garden. It attracts many pollinators to its beautiful blooms. This year I've seen goldenrod spiders, native sweat bees, bumblebees, honeybees, wasps, hoverflies, and lace wings visiting the flowers. Calendula also attracts spider mites, white flies, thrips, and aphids, which are often considered less desirable. As a result, calendula is often used as a magnet plant, attracting unwanted insects away from vegetables.